Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. Welcome back for part two of my two-part series on building healthy soil naturally. I have been, oh, the birds are real busy in the yard. I've been waiting for a break when none of my neighbors are mowing. It's been real rainy, so um, when I wanna be outside when there's a break in the rain, so does everybody else. So hopefully it'll be quiet and folks will be taking a break from mowing while I do this video. I spoke yesterday about some of the ways you can work on building healthy soil naturally. And in that video, I briefly mentioned uh, vermiculture and using worm castings in the garden. So I thought I would show you all at the beginning of this video what my worm bin looks like. Vermiculture is a great way to embrace the permaculture philosophy of um, produce no waste because worms eat your garbage. In fact, that's one of my favorite gardening books. It's called Worms Eat My Garbage. And pan right back here past my horseradish. And right out my back door, I have my, my worm bin. I keep it outside all year round unless it's gonna be below 20 degrees. And then I take it and I put it in my mud room. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's just two Rubbermaid tubs. It sits next to my chicken feed bucket. It's two Rubbermaid tubs and there's bricks in, the, in between to allow the liquid to accumulate. And the, the top bucket has holes drilled in the bottom and the sides. And then the lid has holes drilled in it, as you can see, for aeration. So my worms in this container produce about three quarters of this container full every year of um, worm castings. And what I primarily feed them is uh, coffee grounds and I use, um, I had a source for um, old commercial egg cartons. I feed them, um, let's see if I can then, oh, haha. <laughs> so when people tell me that, that coffee grounds are a great deterrent for slugs, no they're not. My worm bin frequently has slugs happily rolling around in the coffee grounds, so that's not, that's not gonna keep slugs away. Uh, I will, at the end of this video, go feed this leopard slug to the ducks. Um, okay, so my worm bin here if you can pull back you can see the worms they don't like sunlight so the minute you have sunlight and they are going to hide from it so this is all the worm castings down at the bottom that they have produced and um, then they're working through the organic matter at the higher layers and this is a really good source for free high quality fertilizer in your garden cover them back up because I don't like that sunlight and they love to take things like banana peels which are high in potassium and therefore really good for your garden and turn them into soil they like to take coffee grounds I'm a big coffee drinker <clears throat> unfortunately so I produce a lot of coffee grounds they like to eat um, eggshells things that you don't want to put in your worm bin are citrus because it contains a chemical called limonin which is toxic to the worms and they don't really like alliums either pretty much everything else i shredded office paper all goes in there waste products that i can use then as an amendment on my potted plants my young uh my seed starting trays things like that and also it can go directly in your soil i put them around the roots of my um, some of my heavier feeders in the spring. Okay, so hope that gives you a little glimpse about vermiculture. I'm going to move up to the rest of the soil conversation, which I want to have up here. So again, uh, this is a home with four kids and constant projects and constant renovation. So. I want to encourage you if your garden doesn't look beautiful all the time and you have piles of things like cedar shingles and you have kid toys and shoes and um, half done projects that's totally okay that's real life so gardens don't look picture perfect all the time okay so we're gonna go up in my front yard here give me a second to get this gate open I can enjoy my clematis while I get the gate open Quick note, I do use wooden wire gates here so that the sunlight can pass through and not block plants that need it. Okay, so we're up in my front yard where we were yesterday. 
and we're going to talk more about building soil fertility. I know I said yesterday that I was not going to do any more gardening, but I ended up spending about three hours outside in the garden. Anyway, and I ended up planting a lot of things. So I thought I would make a note. I talked about building those layers of the soil and not disturbing the subsoil and how you want to build soil up. When you do that, one of the mistakes I see gardeners frequently make is they get real gung-ho about the wood chips. And then they forget that wood chips are actually a high carbon, low nitrogen uh, product in your garden. And you can't plant into them. You have to plant through them and into the soil. So when I plant things, like for instance, I planted, this is very sunny up here. So I planted some cantaloupe seeds. I pull back the wood chips and I plant into the soil underneath so that my plants have direct contact with the soil. And then you can push the wood chips back or I often leave like a little bit of space and I have sticks so I know what I planted. But just remember that, that we are looking for in gardening, in any kind of agriculture, we're looking for that um, NPK balance, right? So we're looking to balance our important um, elements that plants need to uh, thrive. So there are also more trace elements, but also obviously nitrogen. They need um, phosphorus and potassium. So a great source of nitrogen in the garden, uh, we've talked about this before, is growing living mulches that are nitrogen fixers or plants that are nitrogen fixers and how they sequester um, uh, atmospheric nitrogen and they put it into the soil in the form of ammonia. What else has ammonia that's good, a good source of nitrogen? Urine does. So maybe that's a little hippie for most people, but in permaculture and actually historically in gardening, urine is a great source of free nitrogen, sterile when it comes out of you. So uh, typically mixed one part urine to nine parts water and used as a, a, a feeder for plants that need nitrogen. Um, so when you need phosphorus in the garden, a great source of that is potash, but you have to be careful because you don't want to sweeten your soil too much. So it will, it will um, increase the pH of your soil and sometimes too much, but it is a good source of phosphorus if you need it. And then potassium, some great sources in, in the soil for potassium would be things like kelp meal, which here in Oregon would be a local product. In fact, traditionally gardeners have who live near the seashore have gone to the seashore and harvested their own kelp for their gardens. Other good sources are banana peels and coffee grounds. So once you've got that NPK balance in the soil, you want to work on, um, and your soil is covered and protected with something like a, a living mulch or a wood chip mulch here. We want to talk about this soil microbiome. So the ecology in the soil is just as important as the ecology in the garden. And then I'm going to pull back some of the wood chips here and you're going to see this really um, right here, this white growth, that's fungal growth. So that's all fungi mycorrhizal growth. And folks can get real freaked out when they're new to gardening because we've been so conditioned to, to fear mushrooms that when they see fungus in the garden they can get like oh my gosh this has got to be bad but in actuality in permaculture and in any kind of agriculture fungus in the soil is not going to be a bad thing when we're talking about a fun rich ec uh, ecology of the soil in which we push for fungal dominance. So healthy soil for gardening and particularly for orchards and fruit trees is a soil microbiome that is dominated by fungus and not bacteria. So encouraging good fungal growth means doing things like adding ramiel wood chips. So those would be preferably hardwood wood chips and they would be um, the ends of the wood. So young branches and leaves at the ends of the wood, not so much the heartwood, but those tips and small twigs and things. So when you get free wood chips from places like Chip Drop, sometimes people can be really frustrated if they're full of lots of little twiggy pieces and leaves. No, 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 that's great for fungal growth. If you don't like the way it looks, put it down first and then put the bigger chips over it. Um, so when we're encouraging that fungal dominance, 
we're encouraging uh, the healthiest soil microbiome for particularly trees, but also in general agriculture. I'm gonna walk over here because the rain has made this rhubarb huge. You can look at it while I'm talking about dirt, which is not as exciting to look at. Um, oh, look at that rhubarb. I don't know the name of it. I'm sorry, it's a free one. I got a baby from my neighbor Gemma years and years ago, and it does fantastic every year. So the soil microbiome, when, why do we want fungal dominated versus bacterial dominated? What is the benefit of having all this fungus in the soil? Particularly people see things like dog vomit slime mold, our gardening groups on Facebook, I don't know if yours are like this, peppered with questions and pictures of people real concerned about dog vomit slime mold. They don't know what it is when they find out it's a fungus which is the slime mold, that's so cool. They're such cool organisms. Um, they get real concerned. Those things are not gonna damage your plants. They are feeding off of the wood chips in the soil. That's why we use rain meal wood chips. When we use wood chip mulch and throw down lots of other organic matter, we're encouraging the kinds of fungi that take those wood chips and break them down into bioavailable soil for your plants, okay? So we're setting up a, a nutrient cycling here where we're creating conditions that fungi like, and then the fungi in turn take the wood chips and break them down and make soil for the plants more quickly. When we create a fungal dominated soil, we're also creating soil where we encourage the symbiotic relationship between mycorrhizal fungi and the roots of plants, right? So there's a lot of communication we, I think, tend to neglect the fact that there is what we see above ground and the way those plants all interact and creatures interact, but there also that happens underneath. And there's communication between the roots of plants and other roots of plants and between fungus. And promoting that all promotes healthy, interconnected, integrate, don't segregate. Um, life in your garden and how plants are evolved to grow. So when you deprive plants of a fungal dominated soil, you're depriving them of the conditions under which they have evolved and would prefer to grow. So let's encourage that instead of discourage that. Now you can work this for your benefit. My camera battery is about to go. Um, you can work this for your benefit and you can grow fungi that you want to eat. So dog vomit fungus, not edible. There's lots of other little brown mushrooms, um, inky caps, things that love to live in wood chips. People tend to get real concerned about having them in their garden and want to squash them and remove them because they're afraid of their kids or dogs eating them. You're going to be fine, y'all. You'll be fine. Um, my, I have four kids and two dogs, and uh, none of them have ever tried to eat fungi in the garden. My ducks do. The ducks seem to know what they can and can't eat. Now, the slugs also do. So um, you can so edible fungi so these are edible fungi which the slugs have gotten to and I haven't harvested because of the rain so these are strafaria garden giant mushrooms and when they get past like this I tend to just crunch them up and throw them around the bed and encourage the <clears throat> spawn to go elsewhere but you can see here's the fruiting body and this is what you would eat these are obviously too old um, with the caps and the gills and then here's the mycorrhiza underneath so this this most of this mushroom's life, it looks like this. In the soil, you just see this white stuff. Um, so when you pull back your wood chips and you see that white or beige or yellow um, strips of fungus growing throughout, that is not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That means you're pushing the dominance of your soil microbiome the right way. And when you... Um, see mushrooms in your garden don't be afraid that's a that's a sign that you're building healthy soils and you are creating conditions in which you are cycling nutrients faster so you are taking wood chips and you are more quickly breaking them down so that they become soil available to your plants so so i hope that that helps you i'm sorry i can't talk any longer because my phone battery is about to die and people are pulling out the mowers again um so let's thinking about improving your soil health naturally, think about creating worm bins, thinking about 
finding natural sor sources for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Oh, look, my peony is just about to open up. I let all my radishes, I tend to sow extra radishes and I let them bloom because the bees really love them. And I think they also are kind of fun looking. Um, so nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, getting those balances through natural sources like urine, kelp meal, coffee grounds. Um, and then thinking about creating a fungal dominated soil in which fungi are going to break down your wood chips, your brown mulches faster, make soil faster, and in which they're gonna create a soil ecosystem that promotes communication and healthy participation and symbiosis between the roots of your plants and the fungi in the ground for optimal health for your plants. So thank you for coming and watching part two of my um, two-part series on soil health. I know that was cramming a lot. That's a, there's, I mean, obviously you can get your PhD in, in microbial ecology in the soil, like soil ecology. So it's a tremendous amount and I tried to cover it in less than 30 minutes, just the very basic bits of it. I would love to go more in depth, but I think that might be a little bit boring. This is a topic that really fascinates me. Building healthy soil is something I'm really, really interested in as a gardener. And I hope that it will um, pique your interest as well because becoming interested in it is how you uh, grow healthier plants and produce more food for your family. So feel free and like this video if you enjoyed it, if you got something out of it. I will be back tomorrow with another video. I'm not sure what it is yet, but um, if y'all have suggestions for things you'd like me to cover, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, also please subscribe to my channel. I'm really trying to, to crank out more content. Since I can't have my garden workshops here in the summer, I'm trying to provide all of that content online for free for all of y'all. So. Um, if you subscribe that helps me continue to be able to do that so um, i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and i'll be back tomorrow thanks